Hi, I'm Roland. In this video, I will explain you some things that I did to get a really awesome experience when flying general aviation aircraft in Flight Simulator. One of my favorite aircraft is the Piper Comanche 250 of A to H simulations. This is one of the most realistic general aviation aircraft for Flight Simulator. It not only looks great, it also has a very realistic virtual cockpit with a lot of dynamic movements. They have made very good sound files for this aircraft with incredibly realistic engine sound extending in the very low frequency range. When you connect a tactile transducer system to the audio, you can now feel that the engine is running rough. The top corner shows the vibration transducer signal. I mounted the camera on my chair, so you can see the camera bouncing up and down with the vibrations. When you run the Comanche at idle with low RPM and rich mixture, you will be fouling the plugs, making the engine run very rough. With the transducer system, you can really feel this behavior via strong, irregular vibration bumps, which is very realistic. My Boss Shaker driver card has two inputs, an audio input and a digital input, which gets its signals from the Shaker software. This software checks the simulation conditions via FSUI PC and generates adjustable vibrations for engine, wheels, gear transition, stall, flaps, touchdown and many more. I have mounted the cockpit on rubber feet to isolate it from the floor. The transducers are bolted onto the cockpit floor. In the following flight, I recorded both audio signal top trace and the shaker software generated signal bottom trace when starting the engine the shaker software will create a short engine shudder when taxiing the shaker software will generate wheel vibration and runway bumps When speed on the runway increases, the shaker software increases the frequency and amplitude of the wheel vibration, which suddenly stops when the wheels are off the ground. When I raise the gear, you hear the gear transition. When the wheels lock in place, the shaker software produces a short thump. When leaning the mixture, you will notice that at a certain point the engine starts to run very rough. The Comanche audio will produce strong jolts, which clearly tell you that you leaned the mixture too much. Let's see what happens during a stall. I gradually reduce power and slowly lift the nose. As speed reduces, the shaker software starts to reproduce gradually increasing vibration. Then the Comanche audio starts to produce bumps as well, which get really violent. Then the aircraft drops a wing, just like the real thing. Touchdown is one of the coolest effects. You will see the virtual cockpit shaking, hear the wheels screeching on the runway and feel lots of thumps and vibrations from the shaker software.
a final engine shutter during shutdown and things become really quiet. To add these vibrations to your cockpit, I'm using the bar shaker driver from BFF Simulation in combination with piston type transducer. The BFF shaker driver includes a powerful amplifier for driving transducers up to about 250 watts peak power. The card has two inputs. One audio input which amplifies the low frequency sound from the simulator audio. The other input is a digital input which produces low frequency signals based on flight simulator conditions like touchdown, gear transitions, stall, etc. The volume of both inputs can be adjusted separately. You can power the card from 12 up to 36 volts input. Here I use a 20 volt 5 amp notebook adapter as a power supply, which is quite sufficient for normal use. Let me show you how the system works by applying a low frequency signal from a function generator to the audio input. I connect a DIY piston transducer to show the vibration effect. You can also use transducers like the butt kicker. The oscilloscope shows the transducer current. I'm now running this transducer at a relatively low frequency of around 5 Hz. You can see that the piston is clearly moving, but I'm not getting a lot of vibration, basically because the piston weight is not that high at this frequency, it's not significant. But if I increase the frequency, for example, to around 10 Hz, now you can see that the vibration effect is getting more pronounced. The piston still shakes a lot, but it doesn't make any sound. I will show you what happens when I increase the input volume to a too high level. At a certain point you will see that the signal shows distortion and shows flat bottom and top. This basically means that your signal is overdriven. The input signal is too high. This is shown by the card by flashing a red LED which is a very handy indication to tell you that you're overdriving your card and you should reduce the volume level. The transducer I showed you is actually not complicated. It consists of a cylinder which is non-magnetic material with two coils separated from each other. Inside the cylinder the piston is moving and the piston consists of a very strong neodymium magnet and a north and a south pole metal part. This piston then goes into the cylinder and it moves up and down like this. Now because the magnetic circuit is not closed you have to apply a magnetic circuit externally and this is a bit tricky because it is a very strong magnet so you can see that now the, the circuit becomes closed and I don't want to here you go so now the system the piston is sitting inside the magnetic circuit and it gets sucked into this magnetic circuit it doesn't want to go out and by applying a current through the two coils the piston is either pushed upwards or downward inside this moving magnetic field. And the magnetic spring action is actually keeping the piston from flying out. Here I'm using a slightly different mechanical construction. The piston is mounted with springs to the body on the top and on the bottom. And now you can see that the piston is actually moving a bit less than the open system. However, you can actually hold the piston and have the body of the transducer move instead of the piston. 
And since the body of the transducer has a much larger weight, the vibrations you can get from this kind of setup are actually quite strong. It's actually possible to make transducers by yourself. Here you can see some components that are prepared to build a transducer which is based on the same principle as this transducer which has a spring on the top and the bottom that holds the piston. The springs consist of printed circuit board material which I cut some spirals into and the piston consists of a very strong neodymium magnet and two metal discs on both sides. The spring goes like this and basically gives you a spring mechanism that centers the piston inside the housing. The housing consists of this metal ring which actually closes the magnetic circuit. So once the piston is mounted with the springs inside this metal ring, it will also be centered by the magnetic circuit. To move the piston you mount two coils into this magnetic circuit like this on both sides, on this side and this side and by sending a current through these coils you will move the piston up and down. You can also mount this transducer system to your couch. I connected the driver card audio input to my TV subwoofer output. This system adds a whole new dimension to watching a movie. I hope you found this video interesting. Adding vibration to your flight simulator setup is a great way to enhance the simulation experience. The setup is not complicated, but it does require some tweaking to get the right balance between the audio and the software generated vibration cues. For more information, please read the description below this video or go to my website at www.simprojects.nl.